mind uh, those kinds of competitive things. And then if something develops where you end up not liking each other very much, that just can just kind of add to it. Yeah, I, 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 think, I think that's <laughs> true. Uh, you know, with, with when, when I came here, uh, we had to rebuild a little bit. And, and as we were getting good and becoming a rival, if you will, with Creighton, uh, that was about the time they were about to get out of the league. So then it became more of uh, Northern Iowa with the, with the meaningful games that we had the last handful of years in the league. But the one that we really uh, didn't quite get along with was Illinois State. So those those games took on a little bit of a rivalry. And uh, you're right, it's, it's, it's exciting. It adds to the it adds fuel to the fire, if you will, for both teams and the fan bases as well. You know, I know you made the point to your team that uh, you had two games back to back against the University of South Florida and then East Carolina. And those are the two teams right now this year that are kind of well behind everybody else. And you won both games accordingly by over 30 points. But you made the point to your team, we're done with them. Each of those are in a position in the league where you only play them once in the unbalanced schedule. So uh, the, the knockdown drag out with Tulsa may be more of a regular type thing as we go through the rest of the schedule. Yeah, unfortunately, there's 14 of those after we got <laughs> done with East Carolina and South Florida I told my team you got seven weeks two games a week uh, if you if you start on this past Saturday um, 14 games where you're gonna have to fight and scratch and claw and if you don't play well you'll probably lose so that's just the way it's gonna be uh, I think it was an eye-opener for the guys but you know, you, it, you know how it is with with older people you, you can tell younger people what you've experienced, what you know, but until they go through it themselves and kind of sometimes have to experience it them, themselves before they really uh, take you for, 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 they don't take you for granted, but they, they listen to you and believe what you tell them. You know, and, and we've talked about it a little bit in the non-conference schedule. You've had some good teams come in here and give you some trouble for a while, Arkansas State, Florida Gulf Coast, people like that that are good teams, and it has a lot to do with that ranking that's out in front of your name and your reputation and so forth. And, and now in the league, you've got that, and then certainly on top of it, the fact that it is conference play, and so you're going to get everybody's best shot through the course of the year. As well we, as well we should. You know, that's just the way it is. And, and I, I told the team, uh, gave them an analogy today before practice or after practice, I forget when, but had if we were in the Missouri Valley Conference this year and, and someone added to the Missouri Valley Conference and it was they were talked about in such glowing and complimentary terms as we have been talked about coming into this new league, uh, that would upset me. And I would have ex extra incentive to try to make sure that the new kid on the block doesn't come in and dominate the league. So it's just human nature. And as we talked after the game, you can't be at your very best every single game, and, and Saturday night was a game where you played well, but maybe certainly not as well as you can, and, and found a way nevertheless to come out with a victory. Absolutely. It was, you know, it was one of those games in the, the 20, with the, the five, the great ones, the five that aren't so great, and then the 20, that was, that was right there in that group, maybe hopefully in the lower half of the 20. But um, I thought Tulsa played great. Uh, I've seen Tulsa play on tape, five games probably. I've uh, watched them l on television, live, and uh, it's just uh, they shot the ball so well. I had not seen Taplin play anywhere near that. I knew Corey Henderson would probably play well with, with the incentive he had, but um, man, I thought they were really, really jacked up for the game. And you could tell when, when timeouts, and they were chest bumping, and the, they, they really, and it was bad timing. They had just gotten throttled by 30 at Houston, and their coach had, had questioned their manhood, if you will. All right, we are going to continue with Coach Marshall from AJ Sports Grill at the Alley on our Monday Night Coaches Show. We'll be right back. It has the power to soften the blow. Break the ice. And melt your heart. 
A healthy smile is a powerful thing that deserves Delta Dental, the nation's leading dental benefits provider. Learn more about our individual and family plans at deltadentalks.com. Hello, Shocker Nation. This is Cindy Carnahan with the Carnahan Group at JPY Gannon Sons. For the past 40 years, the Carnahan Group has been helping the great people of Wichita buy and sell homes, helping with first home purchases, patio homes, and everything in between. Whether you are trading up or paring down, we want you to call on us. Let us put our vast experience, our robust marketing, and our proven systems to work for you. Whether big or small, our service is the same. I promise. Have you checked the pancake? Pancakes. And what about the pancake? Pancakes and pancakes. And the uh, pancakes? Yeah, we're pancakes, sir. Well, that sounds flipping pancakes to me. <laughs> yes, it does. Ladies and gentlemen, we are cleared for pancakes. They're $3.99, all you can eat for a limited time. Perfect. $3.99, all you can eat, pancakes, pancakes, pancakes at IHOP. Founded in 1919, Lewis Street Glass is a fourth generation family business that got its start installing and replacing automotive glass. In these times of cut rate, no warranty competition from industry giants, we remain true to our long standing policy of fair pricing and total customer satisfaction. With service professionals who specialize in automotive work, we offer all types of auto glass services, including door mechanical repairs as well as glass restoration work on classic cars. Lewis Street Glass, where we're proud to be Kansas's oldest glass shop. Sage Coach! It's the Patterson Legal Group. Someone's gonna pay. Our client's been in a car wreck. Where's the insurance guy? It's time to pay our client for damages. They deserve more. There's lots of pain and suffering. You really don't want to see us in court, so pay it all now. Heard in a car wreck? Call the good guys. We're Tyler and Gary, the Patterson Legal Group. Call 5500000. Welcome back to our weekly get together with head coach Greg Marshall. The Shockers coming off a two game road trip in which they defeated. East Carolina and Tulsa, and the Shockers will be home for one and on the road for one this week. Wednesday night, SMU, the first meeting with them, and then a return match with Houston on Saturday in Houston. Coach, it's it's always nice when a, a game plan comes together to some extent, and it's something I don't think we even got a chance to talk about after the game, but uh, Tulsa has two very good big guys inside, an E2 and Igbana, and uh, I know one of the things that you worked on as a staff was your guys keeping their feet, not going for shot fakes and head fakes because they both get to the line a lot. And I thought your guys really did a good job of that. Yeah, we did. And uh, the guys did a great job of maintaining good position, being physical, because uh, those guys were pretty physical as well. And uh, they, they got called for several travels and, and very rarely did we foul them to get them, put them on the foul line. Um, so that was that was good. I, Isaac Brown had the scout. He did a wonderful job preparing our team for what we were going to see. And, you know, they just – they had not shot the ball, especially Taplin, the way they had shot it in that game. He got off to a good start. It just seemed to ignite him. He started driving the ball and making little leaners and runners and things. And just one of those nights, and you faced a lot of good guards this year. Yeah, they got the, the big lead, and a 10-point lead. And then um, after that, we got the – we – took control the late latter part of the first half, took a four-point lead into halftime. And then after that, uh, we were able to extend the lead to 10 or 11 points on multiple occasions. And there were opportunities to, at that point, I thought, and I always tell the team if there's a media timeout or a timeout when the, when the lead's 10 or 11, I said, a couple, one of two things is going to happen. It's going to go below 10 and be a game, or we're going to push it towards 20. We had two opportunities to push it towards 20. One was a wide open uh, jump shot on the right wing by Landry Shamit. Uh, had he hit it, it would have been like a 13 point advantage. And we really had some great momentum. And then we ran the lob play to Richard Kelly up 10 or 11 points. And the Shocker fans were into it. And for whatever reason, it went right through his hands. I mean, it was perfectly placed. 
and couldn't have been any better. And all he had to do was just catch it and dunk it. But I think he was thinking about the style points. Well, you mentioned after the game, both teams had a lot of big plays. And while you missed some open looks that really could have, as you said, kind of broken it open, you did come up with some big plays. Connor had a couple of big shots down the stretch and various guys hit some big shots when you really had to have them. Oh, we answered. I mean, that's – it kind of reminded me of the game uh, against Baylor. They would score and cut it to one or two, and then we would come back and score and cut it – get uh, make it four or five. I mean, it was back and forth like that. I thought it was overall a very, very entertaining and, and quality college basketball game. You uh, – we mentioned the crowd at Tulsa – but I think we should mention also, if people are not aware, at Greenville, they have been averaging about 3,100 a game, and it was over 6,000, and that's something that Wichita State in recent years did for the Missouri Valley Conference. They were everybody's biggest crowd by about double the average, and that seems to be happening again in this uh, league. Same thing at Hartford. Uh, yeah, they yeah. Had, you know, that, that place was almost sold out, and they have been struggling with their attendance. So, I mean, it's – and then, of course, I watch the television, and they list our entire road schedule that's remain all year. And they said – and, and, and ref, it was almost like, get your tickets now. This is the road schedule. This is the tour for the Beatles. <laughs> I mean, it's like, are you kidding me? That's, they're, they're, but that's how big the media is making it, which, in turn, people listen and, and read, and, and uh, that's the way people are reacting to the Shockers coming to town. One of the positives for that game, and, and there have been some others and will be in the future, but uh, in this league and having more games close to the East Coast and in the South, it is closer to home for some of your players. And Richard Kelly had like 40 people there at East Carolina, which was wonderful in his So did Coach year. Marshall. I had a little <laughs> reunion in East Carolina. I, uh, uh, it was amazing. Kelly had a 46 comps tickets he left, which was beautiful. I met his pastor, uh, mom and dad, uh, his nephew. I mean, there's a there's a picture somehow somebody floated this picture and they took a group shot and, and Richard's there in his uniform and he's standing on the on the hardwood. And of course, this young youngster right beside him is uh, standing on the first row of bleachers. And so he's a little bit taller than than he would normally be. And he's just looking up at Richard like, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm standing here with with uh, Kevin Durant or, or <laughs> LeBron James. It was he was in awe of of his, his uncle or cousin or whatever it may be, uh, having played the game and played very well. And I, I had a reunion with family, with fraternity brothers, with former teammates, former roommates. I mean, I. I I had to turn it over to Ryan. I said, I cannot deal with this. Anybody that texts me for tickets or wants to see me in a lobby or whatever, you've got to handle this because it just got crazy. It's the closest we've been to where I'm from in uh, many years since Appalachian State. Yeah, and, or and, Davidson. And David, Davidson. Yeah, and, and uh, Jack Frost, who was your SID yep. at Winthrop, was there. I mean, some people that we met from your Winthrop connections at Davidson were there and, and are still following Wichita Absolutely. State and, after all this And they this were time. all in yellow and black, looked great. So the game didn't get over until uh, 11. So by the time we got to the hotel, it was midnight. Of course, by the time we shut it down, it was probably 2 a.m. It was a, a long night with seeing everyone and being able to uh, just reconnect, which, which was, it's, it, I mean, that's what it's all about. It's really fun to, to be able to do that, and um, which made Friday for even a longer day. You're listening to head coach Greg Marshall and uh, the Shockers with the wins this past week at 5-0 and are basically alone in first place in the American Athletic Conference, although Cincinnati is 4-0. and They are the only team in the league that has only played four league games. Houston, who the Shockers will see again this weekend, 4-1, and and then Central Florida, Connecticut, Memphis, all 3-2. and There are four teams in the league, yourselves, Cincinnati, Houston, and SMU, that are basically top 40 type teams. And when you start looking ahead at, at possible at large and the league getting as many teams as possible, uh, are you hoping that there will start to be some separation with those teams from the rest of the pack and, and making a case for getting more teams in? I, I, just, I just want, uh, I, the way I see it is uh, two would be a disappointment, three um, would be okay. Four would be great. That's the goal. Get to if we could get four teams in the tournament every year, I would be ecstatic uh, in this new league. Again, we we were we became almost a one bid league, 
uh, in the in the Missouri Valley Conference. So I, I want to see multiple teams. Uh, hopefully, we can continue to, to be good. We're not we're, we're not set for the NCAA tournament. Cincinnati's not set for the NCAA tournament. A lot of things can happen. We just need to keep playing well. But those two teams look like they're pretty much locks at this point. Houston, SMU, UCF, uh, whoever. I mean, Memphis, somebody could win the tournament too. So I'd love to see at least three teams get in. You know, we used to see more of this in the Missouri Valley Conference, and it was because of several schools playing in civic arenas where scheduling was difficult to get dates all the time. Uh, it kind of was a little less that way during the time that you were in the Missouri Valley Conference here, but we're kind of back to with this unbalanced schedule and some odd things that uh, that certainly the uh, the scheduling is a little odd. For instance, you'll play Houston this weekend for the second time before you've even seen five, I think, of the other teams in the league, and it looks like it's going to be a little bit that way with this many teams and trying to balance out Yeah, it, it just happens. I mean, it, uh, it, we've done this many times before. You sometimes you, it's just the luck of the draw. I don't know why why it happens, but scheduling in this in this in a league like this with 12 teams and civic arenas and all the other issues that you have, and then they try to have it equitable in terms of um, how many days off you have, whether you have more uh, preparation time than the other team. Uh, no three-game road swings, no three-game home stands. Uh, all of those things uh, play a part in scheduling, and it, it really is almost like a computer situation. Now, I think it is a computer, actually, and people have to plug the all those little factors in. And um, it's okay. I, I mean, Houston's good. They're going to be good in February, just like they're good in January. And Cincinnati, you know, and, and us, we, we, they, they, they intentionally held that game for the last – game of the season in Coke Arena and we have to go to them what February uh, yeah mid-February mid February so we don't play them until mid-February and then they come to us late February so that was probably intentional all right we're listening to Greg Marshall talk about Shocker basketball on our weekly Monday night coaches show we'll be back with the coach right after this Elmer and Glass we know our work reflects our family name but we also know that what we do reflects on you for over 50 years now, Bell Mirror and Glass has created and installed nothing but the finest custom-made glass, mirrors, shower enclosures, and more for your family or business. Visit the gorgeous Bell Mirror and Glass showroom today. And let what we do reflect on you. Bell Mirror and Glass. For over 50 years, a reflection of perfection. I'm Coach Greg Marshall. Getting an award means you've achieved something exceptional. So when I tell you that Welch's Heating and Air offers award-winning service with a 96% satisfaction rating, what that means is Welch's will do an exceptional job in taking care of your family's comfort needs. I should know as I rely on Welch's to take care of my family's comfort needs. Call Welch's Heating and Air, your independent American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning customer care dealer at 733-1600. Your eyes are often the first to capture important memories. Dress them for the occasion with a new pair of glasses from Howard's Optical. For nearly half a century, Howard's has given you the look you want and deserve. Ask about the ultimate lens package at any of their four locations in Wichita, Bradley Fair, Riverside, 13th and Mays Road, and their main store at 5405 East Central. Howard's Optical, a heritage of quality, service, and integrity. Visit howardsoptical.com, proud supporter of Wichita State basketball. Go Shocks! So you want to join the popular RV movement? Why not try it before you buy it at Ramsey's RV Rental in Augusta, Kansas? Ramsey's RV Rental has top-of-the-line towable travel trailers that sleep up to eight for your next getaway, road trip, hunting trip, or tailgate. Small to large, toy haulers, too. Many of Ramsey's RV units come equipped with state-of-the-art flat screens, kitchens, bathrooms, and more. Book online now at RamseysRVRental.com, where you could say Ramsey's RV Rental has changed camping into glamping. Ramsey's RV Rental, 316-775-3637. People come from all over the world to shop at Jacob Liquor Exchange. Ooh la la, look at the selection. One for every occasion. Oui, oui, c'est magnifique. You've got to be kidding. We don't have this much scotch in all of Scotland. You have more vodka than the Kremlin. When I want beer, this is where I get her done. Jacob Liquor Exchange has the largest selection of beer, wine, and spirits in Wichita. We're right on the way and right on the price. Jacob Liquor Exchange.
Welcome back to the Greg Marshall Show from AJ Sports Grill at the Alley. Coming up at the top of the hour, it'll be Keitha Adams with Steve Strain talking Shocker women's basketball. Do want to mention real quickly to be sure to vote every day in the ESPN Coaches Infinity Challenge. Coach Marshall once again raising money for the Wichita Children's Home. Go to ESPN.com forward slash infinity and vote every day. You can vote once a day on each device that you have uh, so you can do your laptop and your desktop and whatever your phone whatever it may be so get on there and vote and let's keep that moving forward the polls are out as typical on a Monday and we had an ask uh, had a question here in the house about the breakdown Wichita State was tied for fifth in the AP poll last week with Purdue Purdue had a one-sided win at Minnesota on Saturday, they jumped to third, and Wichita State fell two spots to seven. So I, I don't know how that worked, but the Shockers went up in the coaches' poll from fifth to fourth. Oklahoma, which was ninth in both polls last week, jumped past the Shockers in the AP to fourth. They're sixth behind the Shockers in the coaches' poll. So who knows? Uh, the question had to do with who votes, and the uh, AP poll is a media poll. You know, and I'm not even sure if it is all writers or if there are broadcasters in that group as yeah, well. Yeah, Dick, Dick Vitale's in that group. And it's it's uh, people, that, for the most part, the people that are asked to participate in that have been doing what they do for a long time. A lot of them have national reputations. Uh, they do change it up. It's not the same people for 20 years. They'll they'll keep uh, spreading it around. And coach, how do the the coaches also are are kind of uh, changed up every once in a while, but ha they, do they tend to go have a few at each region or something that vote? I'm really not sure. I'm not sure I've ever voted in a top 25 coaches poll. I have voted in some other polls that were like mid-major polls and whatnot back in the day when I was at Winthrop, but um, I think one coach per league is represented on the, uh, the ESPN USA Today coaches poll. All right. Thank you for the question, and that kind of gives you a little better idea. In the, uh, the metrics or the power rankings, which are truly more important by the end of the year in terms of seeding, Wichita State is number 12 in both Ken Pomeroy and the Jeff Sagarin computer rankings, number 10 in the ESPN BPI. Cincinnati a little ahead of the, uh, the head of the Shockers, and though they're 6, 8, and 10 in those rankings. And I mentioned the Shockers are facing two top 40 teams this week. SMU is 34, 36, and 42 in those power rankings. That's an average of about 37. Houston, 35, 37, and 46. That'd be an average of about 39. So right there, when we're talking about possible at-large bids, four teams in the league in the top 40, and then Central Florida, who we haven't seen yet, is a top 75 team, and UCF plays host to Cincinnati in a midweek game this week, so that's that's one of the better games in the league. You've got two really good ones, and so you never know what kind of shakeup you can see. Well, we will, we will get a real good feel for this league after this week. I mean, SMU's been playing great uh, prior to the last 10 days. I mean, they beat a lot of people. Uh, they had a great RPI, and then for some reason, they go to Tulane and lose in a close game. Then they have to go to Cincinnati. Most people lose at Cincinnati. And then they come home and have their 33-game win yep. streak, I think, snapped at Moody Coliseum there in Dallas by Temple. And Temple was 0-5. So uh, they, they're probably reeling a little bit. Again, bad timing for the Shockers to have to play a team now that's on a three-game road skid, a, a losing skid, and – they have to come to uh, Wichita, with, but they get seven days to prepare. They, the, the last time they played was last Wednesday. They did not play this weekend. And then you go play a team on the road that's stinging from the time they yeah, played you the yeah, first time. Yeah. They, they were probably, that, that probably shocked them, but they haven't lost other than that game, and they, they played a tremendous schedule. They already beat UCF, as you mentioned. So, um, and that we're playing at Texas Southern University. They're renovating their arena, from what I understand, about 60, 68 million. Coke Arena was 25 million back in 2004. So this is supposed to be a Taj Mahal of an arena. Um, and this year we play at Texas Southern, so that's where the game will be. There was, there was talk about, because coinciding with the 50th anniversary of the greatest game on earth, or whatever they called it, when Elvin Hayes and Lou Alcindor played in the Houston Astrodome, having the game at the Toyota Center. 
where the Rockets play, but it just didn't work out. And, and we'll talk a little bit more about that because there is a very direct connection with that game. But while we're talking about some of these things, Wichita State will go into Saturday's game tied with Middle Tennessee with the longest road winning streak in college basketball, 11 straight true road games. Not just <laughs> In the last seven and a half seasons, Wichita State is 74 and 12 in true road games. 84% of their road games in seven and a half. That's just stupid. That doesn't happen for anybody. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't understand it either. It's, it's exciting, and I'm, I'm glad it is that number, but it's, it's hard to believe. Those numbers are crazy. Is it, in your mind, a culture, just like the other things you've built, that that's all part of the culture and some of the things you try to develop with your teams are, are things that, that do play well on the road? I you? think so. It, 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 you know, we're not as good this year defensively and rebounding as we've been in some of the years, but um, defense and rebounding travel. And I also know that, uh, and some people won't like this, but, I know that I have timeouts. I realize that. I don't usually use them. But sometimes playing through the, ne the need to call a timeout when that, that noise is happening, it just hardens a, a, a player or a team. that they Hey, you're going to have to deal with adversity. And we deal with adversity quite a bit, not just on the road, at home, in practice, in video sessions. They hear the truth, and they know what's going on, and it just – these guys are, are very tough physically as well as mentally. And some of that mental toughness seems to be reflected in a, an attitude, an outlook that your guys just seem to feel like no matter what happens, we'll get through this somehow and we're going to find a way before it's all over, that confidence. I mean, like you mentioned, you were down 10 a couple of times in the first half Saturday and by halftime you're ahead by four. Right, right. And, 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 it's, and it's just letting the players sometimes figure it out. And, you know, we get, uh, we get a lot of time to sit down with them during those media timeouts. And um, it's, it's amazing how they just have this resolve. And then you, wa you, you, want, you want to see them work out their problems. It's almost like two kids uh, in a playground squ squabbling and one of them's your kid. Do you go run over there and start interacting and, and, and mediating their, their deal? Or do you just let them work it out? And that's... That my, I, I kind of sit on the sidelines and let sometimes I let them work out their issues, which makes them stronger and better on the other side. And this is a team this year that has a chance to be the best three-point shooting team that you've ever had here. You're shooting around 41%. You're averaging almost 10 threes a game. And yet, this is not a team at any point that lives and dies by the jump shot. Well, it, 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 sometimes it appears that way. It appeared that way to me at East Carolina in the first eight minutes because we were, I think, one for 11. And I was saying, throw the ball inside because we had a distinct advantage in there. And a little bit, uh, that was our problem at Tulsa. But I didn't think we were defending very well early in the Tulsa game. And, and certainly you've seen maybe as many zones as you've seen all year, or as you've seen in your tenure this year. But, and that helps. If you can make a few jump shots, that makes the job easier. But, uh, but certainly you've got other ways of attacking. Yeah, we, shoot the, we seem to shoot the ball a little better at home this year for whatever reason. And that's what I asked him in the under 12-minute uh, timeout against uh, Tulsa. I said, are, are these baskets 10 feet? What's the deal? Why, why, are we not, why can't we make a shot? You know, let's step up and make a shot. If, you want to, if you're going to take it, let, let's make it. You're listening to Greg Marshall on our weekly coaches show from AJ Sports Growth Yellow. Yeah, we're not, not going to break away yet. Uh, you just said something that was kind of interesting to me, and I'm, I'm not disputing it from, a, from the way you look at it as a coach, but you mentioned rebounding not being as good. But you're fourth in the country. You're out rebounding your opponents by almost 11 a game and uh, a really significant advantage in offensive rebounding. You rebound 37% of your own misses, only allow your opponents 24%, which is one of several examples this year where maybe the raw numbers don't look quite as good as some of the teams like your defensive scoring average, but the differences between what you're doing and what your opponents are doing are some of the best you've had. Well, you, you don't see as much video as I do <laughs> either. And I will give you that. Okay, maybe we're a pretty good rebounding team, but 
we're not as good defensively. How about that? If I okay. just say we're not as good defensively, sure. but we're still pretty good rebounding. And then I see more opportunities for us to offensive rebound. I've got certain individuals that just don't go like I want them to do. And they don't get an offensive rebound unless it bounces right to them. So I've got to get more guys like Kelly and like Brown and like – McDuffie, who's now really rebounding well. He, as bad as his ball handling was the other night, he had two great offensive rebounds that resulted in big plays for us. One in, in, one in particular late in the game where he followed his own shot and actually made kind of a difficult in-between hop pickup on the ball without losing a stride and went in the late he's, in. He's got that part of his game. He's really good at that. And then he, in the first half, well, no, it was the second half, he beat Carita to a ball and was able to, to, I think, get fouled uh, that he had no business getting. But he knew where the ball was. He was, you know, I, I tell him all the time, good players always know what's going on with the ball and where the ball is without staring at it. And he beat Carita to the ball, who, had, who didn't know where the ball was, but, but Marcus McDuffie did. All right, we are going to take a time out. You're listening to Greg Marshall from AJ Sports Grill at the Alley, and we'll be back in a moment. I love Carlos O'Kelly's queso. Man, that's what I'm going to miss most about Wichita. Oh, why the ref's taking our food? Whoa, 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 we didn't double dip. Looks like we won't be going to the monitor for this one. Carlos O'Kelly's queso is for everyone. So how many quesos? 36, got it. You don't have to be a shocker legend to love Carlos O'Kelly's queso. As a coach, I know numbers are important. Ultimately, everything we do will be judged objectively by a score and a record. Great teams produce great results. When it comes to home health care, Serenity Home Health is not only the hometown team, they are the champs. Medicare has awarded Serenity Home Health a near perfect quality score of 4.5 out of 5 stars, putting them among the very best in the nation. I trust Serenity Home Health, and you should too. Call 866-2929 to set up a free consultation. Ever wonder what's in a beer? If it's a Bud Light, it's four essential ingredients. Barley, rice, water, and hops. Here's to the beer you can always count on. Brewed to be America's favorite light lager. Winning takes hard work, commitment, and accountability. I'm Wichita State coach Greg Marshall, and I believe in challenging our team, like switching leagues. And so does the hometown team at All Angles Collision Repair. They're in a league of their own, the very best. All Angles has the right people, processes, and prompt service, providing state-of-the-art collision repair with 100% customer satisfaction. All Angles, the winning team in auto body repair. All Angles! Hi, I'm Greg Marshall, coach of the Wichita State Shockers men's basketball team, and I'm here to talk to you about Dillon's. Now, I know a thing or two about committing yourself to excellence. That's why I love Dillon's, because the Dillon's team is committed to high-quality food, low prices, and the kind of friendly service that makes you feel right at home. So next time you're having a party or a tailgate to cheer on the team, stop by Dillon's for your favorite food and drinks. Go Shockers! Great food, low prices at Dillon's. Welcome back to our Monday Night Coaches Show. I mentioned the Shockers are fourth in the nation in rebounding margin. That is their best single statistic, but they are also fifth in assists, 10th in scoring margin, 22nd in scoring, uh, among the other uh, 23rd in the nation field goal percentage defense. Those are some of the, the best statistics, 10th in assist to turnover margin. And some of the numbers that were a little skewed beyond what they normally are early are picking up. The Shockers have improved to 86th in scoring defense, just giving up a little over 68 points a game. They've held their last six opponents under 70 and to an average of 62.7 points per game. 
the stat I wanted to talk with you about, that assist number, fifth in the nation at right at 19 assists per game. You've had 22 or more six times. You had a high for your tenure with 28 against South Florida here and then turn around and have 32 at East Carolina on Thursday night. The, the guys are very unselfish. Uh, we've always known that, but they're moving the basketball. We've got great player movement. We're really cutting well. Um, and there's a lot of guys that can put the ball in the basket. You, in order to get an assist, you have to have somebody score. And we've got guys that can do that. And um, – I don't know if I've ever had a team have 28, much less 32, but I was very pleased to, to see that number. You mentioned the cuts, and it's a it's practically everybody. There was one you pointed out in the Tulsa game where Rondo made a nice cut off the high post, and Landry found him. I mean, it's the combination of guys making the cut, seeing where the openings are, but then the guy with the ball finding. Yeah, we're doing a better job of keeping our eye on the cutter. Usually scoring cuts come late in the cut, not early. You don't want to give them early in the cut. You want to give it to them late in the cut when the defense is given up on the cut. And uh, our guys are, are doing a great job of, uh, of it being in tune with the cutter and trying to uh, get easy ones, just steal baskets. Landry had 11 assists uh, the other night. Was it against Tulsa? East Carolina. East Carolina. He had 11 assists and only one turnover. Yeah, we had a question before the game. Bob and I were asked who we thought would be the shocker player to get a double-double that night. We're thinking points rebounds. So I think I took Shaq, and he took Daryl Willis, and we said it would probably be Kelly, and then it was Landry with his first career double-double with 11 points and 11 assists. And uh, over the last 10 games, he's averaging 17 points a game, but also almost six assists per game. And that's the thing that's just been so amazing about him. He's still leading you in scoring, but uh, he's making a lot of plays for other guys at the same time. He is, and, and guys now, uh, teams now, are trying to really um, focus on him, as they should, and it's, it's harder for him to score. Uh, he's getting his looks more in transition or breakdown basketball. Um, and he's very, very content with running his team, with – giving everyone else an opportunity to get a touch or a shot. And then his usually, like in the second half against Tulsa, that's when his scoring opportunities come once we're into the guts of the game. And, it, and I was going to mention that. It seems like another real strength of his is he's not afraid to kind of let the game come to him. If they are concentrating on him, he'll get other guys involved and pretty much force the other team to kind of spread it out and concentrate on other guys, and then he'll take his shots when they're there. Yeah, he, got, he drove one time in the first half the other night against Tulsa uh, right across from Tulsa's bench uh, very aggressively. And he got fouled, and the guy didn't call it. And, and I, I didn't say anything to the referees all night long, but I, I brought him over, and I said, now, wait a minute. I think my guy got fouled there. And he goes, you know, I may have missed that one. <laughs> I said, okay, well, don't miss it again. <laughs> At, for those of you who are not aware, Landry is leading the nation in three-point shooting, 52.3%, 69th, 69th in overall three-point percentage. He is 90th in three-point field goals per game, and it's actually come up. He's over three per game in conference play, but he's also 65th in the nation in assists and 50th in assist to turnover ratio. You just don't see that kind of all-around numbers very often. No, he's, he's got great numbers because he's, he's selective. He's not, he's not greedy. He's not forcing things, as you mentioned. And that's why, because he's a very talented shooter, obviously. Uh, I wish he'd have made that last free throw so we wouldn't have to sweat out that, uh, the late game situation. But he is a, just a tremendous shooter from all different levels. We talked about rebounding a little bit. and. Uh, one of the things that's been a real strength is not only just the rebounding numbers, but you've out-rebounded 16 of your 17 opponents so far this year, 10 by double digits. The other one is bench scoring, and as good a stat as that's been for your teams over the last two or three years, 16 out of 17 games, you've outscored your opponent from the bench at least by seven points in 13 of the 17. That depth is really showing itself. Yeah, well, I think that, that stat has a better chance of... of uh, continuing uh, that strongly throughout the course of the season than the, the stat about out-rebounding people because our bench, uh, we lose nothing when we go to our bench. We, we literally have 10, 11 starters, so I feel very confident. And then it's, it's my decision who 
gets the, the, the runs during the, the meat of the game at the end because they've been playing well that night. I mean, we've got – I mean, like Rano, the guy barely plays the first three games in league, and now the last two games he's played very, very well. And I know that you're trying to lengthen the bench a little bit when the opportunity there, C.J. Kaiser has seen a little more time. He did not play at Tulsa, but certainly has seen more time in some recent yeah, games. Yeah, we, we, again, without losing the games, I, I didn't have that luxury against Tulsa. All right, you're listening to Greg Marshall. We're going to talk about the upcoming week. Two tough opponents coming up, and uh, SMU we're seeing for the first time. We'll talk about the Mustangs when we come back for our final segment of the Greg Marshall Show from AJ Sports Grill at the Alley. No contour from Cox gets you right to the strange stuff. Something's coming. Something hungry for blood. Noble stuff. The crown must always win. Show me something dramatic. And orange stuff. Along with the best stuff on cable. Because Netflix is now on contour. How awesome is this place? Just say it. Black Mirror. And get right to the fierce, funny, bold, and bingy stuff. Watch it all on contour. Just say Netflix to get started. With Cox My Account, you can stay on top of things without having to call. Check statements and pay your bill instantly, so nothing gets by you. Keep an eye on the strength of your Wi-Fi and fix issues right under your nose by resetting your modem or set-top box. Even check TV listings. Sign into My Account at Cox.com today uh. so you never miss a thing. With Cox High Speed Internet, you get access to super fast in home Wi Fi to power all your devices and do the things you love online. And now, when you're traveling, you have free access to the nation's largest Wi Fi network with over 500,000 hotspots so you can stay connected in places such as New York City, Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Phoenix, and many more. Learn how with the Cox Discover More video series at cox.com slash learn. In the blink of an eye, cities fall, heroes rise. A heartbeat skips as a man slips gravity's grip, and heartbreak leaps from the brink. In a blink, just think of all the games, teams, hopes, and dreams that live and die because greatness lies. In the blink of an eye. This is the sports app on Contour from Cox. Cable TV reimagined to get you right to the good stuff. Now Contour from Cox gets you right to the strange stuff. Something's coming. Something hungry for blood. Noble stuff. The crown must always win. Show me something dramatic. And orange stuff. Along with the best stuff on cable. Because Netflix is now on Contour. How awesome is this place? Just say it. Black Mirror. And get right to the fierce, funny, bold, and bingy stuff. Watch it all on Contour. Just say Netflix to get started. Welcome back to the Greg Marshall Show. A couple of things that have come up in conversation here during the breaks that I thought I would follow up on. Uh, Ron O'Nerger dislocated a finger in the game at Tulsa on Saturday, and, and uh, how did that all turn out? Uh, they had a doctor on site. He was able to help Rono get the left pinky finger back in place. Uh, Todd taped him up, and he was able to play and actually helped us big time in the win. I thought he was tremendous. And then... Um, after that, uh, they did. A, they actually had a place they could X-ray it, and there's no fracture. So he was seen by our doctors today uh, after practice, and he's good to go. It's, it's a little sore, obviously, when that happens, but uh, fought through it and helped us win. Fred Van Vliet's game was brought up uh, Thursday night while we were playing at East Carolina. He had a career high 22 against LeBron James in Cleveland, hit six of eight threes, and, and uh, over his last six games, averaging better than 11 points a game for the Toronto Raptors. Yeah, I, I texted him after that game, and I told him that, uh, first of all, we, we all knew it was going to happen. We were excited and happy and proud of him, and that I was going to, hopefully, he, he was going to be able to float me a little alone. <laughs> <laughs> Um, 
For, I think people also would be interested in knowing this. Alex Johnson, who is the director of development for the athletic department, was on the trip, and there have been a lot of scouts at the Shocker games this year. One was from the Houston Rockets in the game uh, at East Carolina, and Alex had a conversation with him. Cleanthony Early was just recently traded from uh, Santa Cruz, California, and the whatever it is now, it was the G League, G League now, to uh, the Rio Grande Valley where uh, Trey Murray played a couple of seasons, and uh, that's a Houston-affiliated minor league team. And the scout told him they are basically rehabilitating his career. They think he still has a lot of potential. They're looking for a forward that can shoot it, and they think he's going to be back in the NBA relatively soon. I hope so. Uh, he, he's, a, he's a great kid and would be tremendous uh, uh, to have in any organization. He's, he's going he's gonna to do things the right way. Uh, I think he's learned his lesson. He, that was a, a dumb thing that he did, but young people make – even old people sometimes make dumb decisions. <laughs> but uh, he made a dumb decision, and, and I, I hope that it won't cost him his career. Hopefully he can get back and, and, and make an impact. All right, SMU, Wednesday night. By the way, that's a 6 o'clock tip-off, so be sure you're aware of that. That's an hour earlier than a lot of games. And uh, SMU coached by Tim Jankovich, who certainly you coached against in your first four years in the league in the Missouri Valley. Uh, he was the head coach at Illinois State, then left to go to join Larry Brown at SMU. He's now in his second year as head coach there. And from what you've had a chance to scout, similar in his style and approach to what he was at Illinois State? Well, first of all, Jank's a great guy. and uh, he, he does a wonderful job at Illinois State and as an assistant coach with Bill Self and other places. He was a great player at K-State. Um, you know, they're, they're, this, this is a little different SMU team. They don't have the bigs that they've had in the past. Um, and, they, of course, they lost a, a player by the name of Sime Ojale to the Boston Celtics. He went early. And that's hard to bounce back from, uh, you know, in, at, at SMU. And so that they, they're not quite as good as they've been. They, they had a wonderful start. Uh, they beat some teams down in the Bahamas tournament, um, and their RPI and everything was going great. And then they hit the little skid, three three in a row. And we hopefully can make it four in a row, but this team's going to come in hungry. They are very, very talented. They're very athletic. They can really, really shoot it. Uh, I watched them against Central Florida about three weeks ago, and I told my staff, I said, on a neutral court, I think this might be about – they might be favored by 10 against us. I mean, I really was impressed with their personnel and how they play. So it's going to be a battle on Wednesday night. They have five starters who all average 10 points or more per game and anywhere from 4.6 to 6.2 rebounds a game. Would you typify them as a team that's sort of medium-sized across the board and, and very versatile? Yeah, it's positionless basketball is how we, we've, we've uh, explained it to our team. Anybody can play anywhere, and it's dribble drive, and they're all trying to drive it, get paint, score, and if they get cut off, kick to the next guy, and he's going to do it. So uh, they put a lot of pressure on a defense, and especially a defense, a, a, a team like us is, that does have positions. We, you know, Shaq is the five, and uh, Connor is the two, and, and Landry is the one, but uh, they, they, don't, they have a lot of guys that are very similar in their uh, talent and, and skill level. But, but Jimmy Witt doesn't shoot the three. He's the only one. The other ones, they've got the number one. I mean, Landry's very good, but they've got the number one uh, three-point shooting guy in the country and the transfer from Georgia Tech. I can't pronounce his name. And then they've got uh, the preseason player of the year, Shake Milton, and he's, he's a tremendous inside outside score shake milton 6'6 six, six. he averages 17 and a half points four and a half assists one and a half steals makes two and a half threes a game shooting almost 42 percent plays 36 minutes a game plays a lot of minutes because he's a very good player and they're not quite as deep as us from what we've gathered uh but man their first seven are really really good should be a terrific game Wednesday night, 6 o'clock tip. And then just to mention, the game at Houston's also an early start, 11 a.m. on Saturday uh, for the game, which will be at Texas Southern's 
uh, Rena or Jim, it is the 50th anniversary of the game of the century between Houston and UCLA at the Astrodome, and Elvin Hayes, who was the star of that game, does color commentary on Houston radio. So we'll get a chance to see him. He didn't make the trip here. We'll get a chance to see him. So he'll actually be there to help celebrate that momentous occasion. The Big E. I remember when he was with the Washington Bullets and Wesley Unseld, another guy that played for a Valley school in Louisville. Uh, they had Bobby Dandridge and I think uh, uh, Reardon. Was it was it uh, Mike Reardon? Yeah, Mike Reardon. Uh, can't think of the point guard, but man, those those were two back-to-back -back years. They played the Seattle Supersonics for the championship and won one one year and won one the next. For those of us to go way back, this is all the way to my college days. Wesley Unseld and Elvin Hayes played against each other in this building in the 1968 NCAA wow. regional semifinal. Wow. So fun week ahead. Glad to have you with us. Stay tuned for Steve Strain and Keith Adams talking Shocker women's basketball. That's our Greg Marshall show for this week from AJ Sports Grill at the Alley.